Hey everyone, this is Tara Lynn, the Painted Cicada. Welcome to Lucky Light Acrylic Painting. I am super excited to paint with you tonight. Uh, before we begin, I will go over supplies. And uh, this painting is real uh, fun and simple. And I'm excited to share it with you. Um, so what you're going to need tonight is something to create on. I'm working here in my art journal. Um, which is about a nine by 12. Um, you've got tracers available for eight by 10, 11 by 14 or 16 by 20. So you can work in any size that you would like. Um, as far as paint goes, I have got green oxide. I have got, which is kind of a grassy green. I've got green gold, which is one of my favorite colors. Um, if you don't have a green gold, you can just add some yellow to your chromium oxide. No big deal. I've got phthalo green blue shade, um, which is a green that just has a slightly blue tint. Uh, what else do I have? Um, white and black I use for just about everything. And then I've got quinacridone magenta, which is a nice bright magenta. I've got dioxazine purple, any purple will work. I've got cadmium yellow, again, any yellow will work. Um, and that's it. So there's not very many colors in this painting. Uh, this was one that I created kind of when I was getting in the mood for St. Patrick's Day and spring. And um, I really just enjoyed the greens. I miss green here in Ohio. We haven't had green for quite a while. so. Um, also optional, if you've got white gesso, that might help you get some transparency on the flowers that we're doing. Um, so I'm going to mix both white paint and white gesso, um, but you can use just white paint if you don't have that available. Um, you'll need, uh, because we're working in acrylic, water, paper towels, uh, something to put your paint in. Um, paint brushes in various sizes. I've got small, medium, and large rounds and small, medium, and large flats. Um, a heat gun or hair dryer may help you speed along the process, but that is completely optional. The uh, transfer or tracer, whatever you want to call it, is provided. Um, if you wanted to use that, you would need carbon paper or you could transfer with a pencil or chalk. Um, I'll walk through drawing this with you as well. So let's get started. So I'm working here in my journal. I am going to sketch mine in Sharpie so that you can see it on camera easily. However, uh, don't be afraid to use that tracer. Um, if you don't want to draw it, use the tracer. Um, if you do want to sketch with me, you do not have to use a Sharpie. You can use a pencil um, and go lighter uh, if you want to. So the first thing we are going to do is draw some lines. So my first line is nice and long. And I've got a shorter one. And these are just vines, so don't worry too much about it. Here in the middle, we're going to have our light bulb. So I'm going to come right about halfway down the page with that one. I'm going to be specific with that one. Um, and then over here, we're going to have a line that's a little bit longer. And then over here, again, a little bit longer. Uh, you don't have to be exact with these. The only one that I'm really all that concerned about is the light bulb. Okay. Um, now let's start skirt skirt let's start sketching that light bulb okay um, the first part that we are going to put in uh, is the rectangle up at the top this is the part that has the threads for screwing in the light bulb okay I'm going to draw a line down right down the center of my light bulb. That's going to be hidden as we paint. Uh, we're going to add some stems to the flowers, but I do want to keep my center. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we are going to pull both sides of this light bulb down. And then we're going to curve to create that bulb. 
And we want our, our bulb to be fairly uh, the same on both sides. So you might want to adjust it just a little bit. Uh, but again, when we do this, we're sketching. We can always fix this when we're painting. All right, and then so this will be our inside bulb, and then we're going to add another layer to this, which is the outside of that bulb. So it's going to have a little thickness. Now we're going to paint over this. You're not going to see all these lines in your painting. These are just going to guide us. Um, we're going to add some flowers on these stems here. We don't need to sketch that in. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is play with our background. So, uh, I am going to get both um, gold, or I'm sorry, chromium oxide and green gold in my palette here. Now remember, if you don't have a green gold, you can just do mix a little chromium oxide with a little yellow. I'm also going to get a little white on my palette. I don't need a lot right now and a little yellow. I don't need a lot. Um, now the first thing I'm going to do is just start applying this color to the background. Um, you know what I forgot? Just a pinch of this phthalo green. Just a pinch. We don't need a lot. All right. So three greens, yellow and white. Now the first thing I'm going to start doing is I'm going to take this chromium oxide. This is our bright grass green. And I'm just going to start covering the background a little bit. I'm going to spread this here and there and everywhere. Covering a majority of this background with just brush strokes of this bright green. Okay. Now, if you see me adding anything to my paint, that is just because my paint has become a little old and gloppy. So I am just trying to keep this nice and smooth. If you're not using old paint that you probably should have thrown away, you don't have to add anything. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, you can see I'm brushing back and forth, X's here and there, right, of that green. Then I'm gonna dip into my green gold and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna move this around It's okay if it blends in with some of that wet green. Now I am going to add some of these colors behind my light bulb as well. because we can see right through that, right? Glass is somewhat transparent, so don't be afraid. All right, we're just gonna fill up this background with mostly green uh, chromium oxide and that green gold. Now we're going to work quickly. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and I'm going to start brushing that white in there just a little bit. And I want to see these brush strokes, okay? Don't hide what you're doing. Let me add, just because I'm getting a little bit of a glare, let me stick something underneath here. All right, that's helpful. So you can see down here where I've added in the white, and I'm just gonna add white here and there. I'm gonna blend that out with the green. 
So we've got mostly chromium oxide and green gold. I'm gonna continue layering these with more. Now I've got my white. Um, and as you can see, it's hard to see with that glare. I've got a little white down here, a little white up there. And I'm just gonna keep filling in this background until I've gotten most of it covered. I'm using big bold strokes. There's no hiding the brush strokes here. Have fun with this. This is a nice big bright green background. If you lose that white you can always add in a little bit more. Right now I'm just going to dip it a little corner of my brush in that phthalo and I'm going to brush some phthalo in the background here. I'm not going to use a lot. I'm just going to change up just dipping in the corner, changing up that green. Now I did white here and here, so I'm going to do my phthalo here and here, just adding some depth and dimension to the color of green that we have in the background. As we're working, just making sure we're covering up all the white of our canvas. I know this has got a glare on it, but as it dries, you'll be able to see this better. So that's my background and you can just play with it until you have it where you like it. There's no right or wrong. So um, you can mix out some of that white. If you feel like it's too white, you can add more phthalo, but really we're just getting a nice brush strokey background going on here. And I just like to play with it until I get it where I like it. You can stop whenever you feel like you've you've reached that point uh, where you're happy with it. Let me see. Now the angle of this might be a little funny, but that drastically helps with the glare, right? Um, all right, so once you get your background kind of splotchy and happy um, and how you like it, we're going to move on to the next step. Let's see, I might just blend this out just a smidge more. But as you can see, I just played with that background, right? So I've just got different shades of green here and there. And I think I might add a little more darkness up here in my sample. It was just a little bit darker. But totally your call. Yours can be as, as bright or as dark as you'd like it. So anywhere you want to darken, just add some of that phthalo in. Anywhere you want to lighten, you can add in white or you can add in green gold. You can literally layer this background over and over until you have it just perfect. Oops. 
having glare issues tonight, people. was too short this one was too tall let's try this there we go I think that works much better that is the downside to having paint that dries uh, with a glossy finish right okay so there's my background I've got that nice brushstrokey splotchy finish that I really like um, the next thing I'm going to do is get some black on my palette. We do not use very much black. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix just a little bit of black with that phthalo. So I'm going to get a really dark phthalo, but I don't want to just use black. I want this to have a green tone. And then I'm going to get a nice thin uh, paintbrush. So if you've got a liner brush, that would work really well. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this paint because I want it to move smoothly. So just dip in your water. Um, you don't need a lot, just a smidge. And then what we're going to do is we are going to redraw in the vines. in their vines. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be straight. These I covered up too much, but I remember this one was right about here. And this one was a little bit longer. All right, so I want a total of two on each side and then the one that's holding the light. And those were just done with uh, phthalo green mixed with a smidge of black. We are going to focus on this little um, piece of the light bulb here, um, that rectangle. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix a little bit of black with a little bit of white. And we are going to mix up what I would consider a medium gray. So you don't want it to be too dark. You don't want it to be too light. Right in between black and white is where we want it, right in the middle because this is going to be um, our base color and then we're gonna add highlights and shadows because that part there is metal. So, get a good mix of that. And we are gonna mix from this. So um, maybe mix so that you have a little bit extra. I feel like I have achieved medium gray here. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I can refine my shape, but really I'm just going to fill in the rectangle. Making sure if you have sketch lines that you cover those up. So that's our medium gray there. I'm going to pull a little bit of this off to the side. And the 
and I am going to add some white to it. using a round brush and what I like about round brushes is you they can be as thin or as thick um, as you want depending about how much pressure you use with them so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some highlights so um, this is kind of coming from the edge and I'm just going to pull that in a little bit there and then a little bit here I'm going to add some short strokes so over on the left side, I'm going to pull in like maybe five longer strokes. And then over here on the right, these strokes are nice and short. And I will lift this up to show you specifically what I did. All right. And I'm going to wipe this brush off. I'm going to pull some of this out and I am going to add a little bit of black. And we're going to create a dark gray. And then with my dark gray, I am going to pull dark gray here in the middle. Some long thin strokes right across the middle. All right, so we had our base coat. We had our light gray and we had our dark gray. Um, now I'm gonna use my thinnest round or liner and I'm gonna add a little bit of black and a little bit of white. Now I do want my black and white to be a little thin. Let's see, I'll start with my black. So I'm gonna thin out my black just a bit. And what I'm going to do with the black is I am going to add a nice shadow under the bottom. I'm going to add a shadow over here on the left and I'm going to pull that shadow in in a few places. So I added a line across the bottom. I added a shadow line on the edge and then I pulled that in in just a few places. Now here in the middle, I'm just gonna add a few lines and I don't want them to be all in the same place. And that's gonna make those threads look like they have some depth to them. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing with white. So I'm gonna thin down that white just a bit just enough so that it's nice and smooth. All right, and this is pure white. And with that, I'm gonna add a few strokes coming in here. and then a few longer threads with the white. We're just giving the impression of threads, okay? It's not meant to be, this is not meant to be super hyper-realistic, okay? Oops. Now I'm gonna stick with that white. I cleaned off my brush, but I don't really need to do that. And we are going to go over the outline of this light bulb. Okay, so I'm gonna do my outermost outline first. And 
and it's not perfect and that's okay I'm gonna come back and just kind of refine it just a bit because because this is a painting and I'm not a machine and neither are you it's okay to make mistakes so just do that outline first and then I'm going to add a little white right here that is a highlight down at the bottom and then I'm gonna add a little wing in there on that side we're gonna fill that in with glare and then over here I'm gonna add another this one's gonna be kind of like a teardrop so a teardrop on the left a wing over here on the right, a bright highlight at the bottom. All right, we're going to let that light dry a little bit. We're going to play with the flowers. Flowers is the fun part. All right, so for the flowers, we're going to need um, on our uh, paint plate or paint palette, um, a little dioxazine purple, a little quinacridone magenta, and some white. All right, now I'm gonna add a little bit of white in the same area as my quinacridone because I am gonna mix those together, however, I'm not gonna completely mix them. So I'm gonna grab, let's see, here's a kind of a medium sized round brush. This is a number eight. Um, don't worry too much about the sizing. It's not really consistent between brands. But what I'm gonna do is, so I've got my purple here and my magenta here. I'm gonna mix the white and magenta, but I am not going to completely mix it. You see how it's just uh, kind of a mess there? that's what we want. So I've got paint on my brush. I'm going to add a little more white over there just in case I need to dip in the white. Um, so I've got a good mix here on my brush. It's not completely, oops, get it all over my hands. Uh, you can see it's not thoroughly mixed and that's what we want. We want a little bit of magenta, a little bit of white on your brush. And what we're going to do, so I'm going to start here on the longest vine, and I am going to tap in just a cluster of flowers. And the more that you tap, the more that your paint is going to mix on your brush. So go ahead and tap back into your paint. I've got magenta and white on there. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space. And I'm going to tap another set of flowers in there. And I'm going to do the same thing four times on this vine. So I'm going to leave a little space. And I'm going to bring my top one right up to the edge of the page. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing with my short vine. For the short one, I just am gonna do two sections. I'm not gonna do any on the uh, vine that holds my light. Over here, I'm gonna do three sections. And vary the sizes, vary the length of your sections. They don't need to all be the same. And then over here, I'm going to do three sections, but I'm going to make one of these really long. But you can vary yours however you want. So it's this top one I'm going to make really long up here. All right, so that is our first layer of our flowers. All right, 
Sorry about this glare. It's the curse of glossy paint. All right. So I've got that same round brush. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the white as I did with the magenta, except I'm going to do that with the dioxazine. So I'm going to get a little of the purple and a little of the white on the brush and I'm going to tap that over the top. So um, I'm going to use a little less of the purple than I did of the magenta. And don't overthink the placement, y'all. This is... Natural flowers have a lot of variation. All right, so we added flowers, um, sections of flowers with magenta and white, and then we uh, went over those sections with the dioxazine and white. And now I'm gonna get some pure magenta. I'm not gonna mix it. I'm gonna get some of that on my brush and I'm gonna come back through and just tap some of that pure magenta over the top. The reason why these flowers pop on this uh, background is because magenta and purple are directly across the color wheel from green and yellow. So they make a nice uh, bright contrast with each other and I really like that look. And that's it. The, those flowers are super easy to make. I mean, they're literally just dots from the paintbrush. All right, I'm going to clean off my brushes before we move into the next step. So we are going to uh, work on some flowers now and then the light bulb and then we're going to go back to the flowers. Um, and add in some shamrocks, but I'm just cleaning up my brushes, getting them out of the way. All right. Now this is where I'm going to use some gesso to start with. So I'm going to get a little bit of gesso um, on my palette plate here. And the reason why I um, recommend gesso instead of white paint is because gesso will come out sort of transparent and that's what I'm going for. Um, if you're using white paint, don't stress, that's okay. You might just have a more opaque look to these flowers and that is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a small round brush and I'm gonna dip into this gesso. Now first, um, we're gonna kind of plan out where we want this bouquet to go. So it's coming out of this light here. And so I'm just gonna start Kind of tapping randomly with now I'm using gesso like I said if you don't have gesso that's okay all right so I'm going to tap in kind of some spots randomly wipe off my brush I'm going to come back and I'm going to 
in a circular motion, wipe this gesso into circles. And that's kind of the start of our bouquet there. All right, so I did that once, and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do the same thing again. And I'm just gonna tap in. And don't overthink this. Some of these are gonna overlap, that's what we want, okay? Tap in that gesso or white paint. Wipe off your brush and then come back through and extend that paint out. Just brush it out. Kind of creates these wispy circles. dip into white paint. We are using white paint the whole time. That's fine. This time we're going to come through and where we've got some of that green, um, we're going to add in some flower shapes. Now I'm going to make just kind of wonky squiggles in the areas where I've got openings. Some of them are going to go over the background. Some are not. Now I'm not overthinking, right? Like I'm just kind of squiggle here, squiggle there, and it's a flower. Okay. Vary up the sizes, vary up the way you make your squiggles. All right, now I'm gonna get some more chromium oxide. That's, oops. Yikes, that's our green, which so lovingly squirted all over my painting here in the corner. That's okay though. I also got up and made a giant mess with that. Okay, that's all right. Sometimes my supplies want to get a little feisty. All right, so chromium oxide and I'm going to mix that with an equal amount of gesso and then I'm going to come back up here and do the same thing that I did with the previous gesso so just adding some taps of that lighter color going to wipe off my brush and then I'm brushing out that gesso. Now some of it might pick up the white that we put down there. That's okay. What we're doing when we do this is creating layers. And when we brush it out like that, it dries very quickly. So I'm gonna come back through with my gesso. Again, you can do this with white and I'm just gonna tap in a few more gesso flowers. So just tapping in those white marks. Doop, 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 doop. 
You don't have to make silly noises if you don't want to. And it just kind of gives us this cloudy effect when we do that a few times. All right, now I'm gonna come back through with some green gold with my small round brush now with the green gold, I'm just gonna come in here and just add some green gold swiggles. Again, if you don't have the green gold paint, just add a little yellow to your green, your chromium oxide. And so I'm doing the same thing that I did with those white flowers. Now we've got some green flowers. So we've got kind of that fun cloudy background. We've got more opaque white flowers and we've got some of those green gold flowers. Now, uh, before I move on to adding shamrocks, which is the next step, I'm gonna take a nice thin brush. I'm gonna dip into some black paint and I'm gonna give some of these flowers centers. You don't have to do all of them. I would say do about about half. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is mix up a shamrock color. Now for my shamrocks, I want a little bit of phthalo. So one part phthalo to let's say one part chromium oxide. Mix that up and that's gonna be our shamrock green. If it's too similar to what we've got going on, you can add a little yellow. I think mine's pretty good. I might actually add just a pinch of white. So get your green where you like it. We just want to vary up that green. All right, now I'm gonna get a nice small brush. And um, shamrocks are a very easy shape to paint. So, um, I'm going to show you here and I'm going to do this slightly larger so you can see it and with yellow because I've got yellow left over. All right. So when we paint a shamrock, we're going to make little hearts. So each section is a heart. If you want a three leafed shamrock, you just tap in three little hearts. If you want a four leaf, you would just do one, two, three, four. Um, so basically what I'm doing is each is a little bit bigger. Each part of those shamrocks, you're just painting parts. All right, so this would be a four leaf clover. All right, but we're gonna do that on a smaller scale. So get a nice small brush and get that green color that we just made and start adding in some shamrocks or some clover. Oops. Oh, 
little too much water on my brush there. That's okay. And they don't have to be perfect. We're just adding in fun little flowers. Fun little greenery. And I like to mix my three leaf clover and my four leaf clover. So I'll paint some that are three and some that are four. just going to fill up this space with lots of these clover. And this is an abstract painting. You know, this is not hyper realistic, so don't stress over these being perfect, okay? We're just giving the impression You can add as many or as few as you want. Around the edges, sometimes I just like to add individual petals or two. Just because, you know, sometimes you don't always see every single petal of every flower. They're just kind of in there smushed around. So don't be afraid to do that. You can even go back in there and do that with a little bit of white if you want as well, you know. Just add little touches around the edges. All right, I'm gonna grab my liner brush and what we're going to do with liner brush is I'm going to go right into phthalo no added colors add a little bit of water so it's nice and thin and moves easily and down in the middle of this light bulb I'm just going to start adding some nice thin stems. And they go all different directions. They cross over each other. Different lengths, right? We're on to our last few steps here. Now I am gonna get a paintbrush and go back to my gesso. 
Let's see, I might need a smidge more. All right, and again, I'm gonna put some paint or put some gesso on my brush. I'm gonna offload that onto a paper towel so there's not very much on here. And then I'm gonna fill in these, uh, the teardrop and then the area over here, that wing that we created. And then I'm gonna go around the inside edge of that light bulb. And that's going to help give the impression of glass. And you see how nice and transparent that gesso is. We see a lot of that green through there. I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to pull some a little bit of that gray that I mixed up and it doesn't matter if you choose light gray, dark gray. And I'm just going to add a darker shadow on the bottom of the teardrop down here at the bottom of the light bulb and then a few up there in that wing. And that just makes it look a little more light bulby. And then um, I'm going to get a little gesso on my finger, just a tiny bit, and I'm going to kind of smudge it in here. And that just adds a little cloudiness in that light bulb. Makes it look a little more like glass. So I filled in the bat shape and the tear shape um, with gesso on my paintbrush. And you can see that gesso is nice and transparent. I outlined the inside outline of the light bulb. And you can still see the, that white pop. Then I added a little shadow with one of my gray colors that I had left over. So I added it to the teardrop. I added it at the bottom of the bulb and then a few strokes in that wing. And then in these two places, I smudged some, I put some white gesso on my finger and smudged. And that just gives the impression of a reflection on that glass. And that is it. Now all you have to do is let your paint dry. And that is your lucky light painting. So I absolutely cannot wait to see it. Um, I hope that you will share with me. Um, I'll tell you the places you can share and uh, put the address on the screen. Um, oops, that's not it. Um, you can share your creations with us in the Painted Cicadas Art and Share group on Facebook. The address is right there at the bottom of the screen, www.facebook.com slash groups slash painted cicada group and um, there's lots of wonderful people there who are ready to cheer you on um, if you choose not to join that group you can also just tag me at painted cicada and i will see your beautiful painting i hope that you consider sharing with me um, and then i also would like to give a shout out to my supporters um, thank you so much for being a part of uh, my painting life. I absolutely appreciate you. Um, supporters get everything that I do for only $4.99 a month. Um, you can get more information there um, or just look me up on Facebook, uh, The Painted Cicada, and I've got lots of information on my Facebook page. Um, everything for my supporter membership is done through Facebook. Um, again, it's only $5 a month. That's less than the cost of one class. Um, so it's super worth it and super fun. And we make lots of beautiful things. So I hope you will consider joining us if you have not already. And if you're already there, um, again, shout out to my supporters. I uh, do what I do because you guys are there with me. So thank you so much for joining me for Lucky Light. This is one of my favorites. Um, I am so ready for spring um, and I am so ready to see what you've painted. Can't wait to see it. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great day, everybody.